Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen and today we are going to do something a little different. Today I'm going to bring you along on a research project that I'm doing and it deals with the American Southwest. Now I know what you're thinking. My heart obviously lies with the archaeology of ancient Greece, but the archaeology of the American Southwest, well it cuts my paychecks. So today I'll show you what we got going on. We're going to be testing this which is corrugated pottery. As you can see, it's got all these little ridges and everything. And that, of course, is different than smooth walled pottery like this. And what we're going to be testing is the thermal properties of corrugated pottery. You see, I think that this corrugated pottery is going to bleed heat a lot faster than the smooth walled pottery. Seems kind of like a no brainer, but apparently not. And when talking about the thermal properties of corrugated pottery, you may see this, but I see this. This is an air-cooled engine out of a 1967 Yamaha two-stroke. Now this doesn't have a radiator to cool it down. Instead, what it has is it has these fins all over it. And what these fins do is increase the surface area on the outside of the engine. And the way that that helps is that as the engine heats up, the heat radiates to these fins and as air goes over it, the air grabs the heat and pulls it with it, effectively cooling this down. This is a technology that has been used for years, decades. I mean, this is from 1967 and this isn't even the first one. So when I see this and I see corrugated pottery, I see kind of the same thing when it talks, when we're talking about thermal properties. But we're not going to test this. This is already tried and true. We're going to test this. So in order to test it, what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with a liquid, put it on a burner, heat it up, let it cool down, measure it. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're also going to do the same thing with the smooth walled pot. But here is the kink in the whole thing. You see, I'm kind of an amateur when it comes to this stuff. Uh, and even though I had a professional potter helping me with this, I didn't really make a pot. What I made uh, was really just a fancy colander. These couldn't hold water if their life depended on it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use these. These are the corners of crock pot liners that I'm going to put inside the pots in order to hold water. Now, if you don't have a crock pot at home, you really should because it's amazing. Why don't you have one? Anyways, maybe that's for a second channel. So let's, uh, let's just measure the volume of this first. Two cups of water. Okay, there we go. They both have two cups of water. No leaks, no leaks. Ha <laughs> ha, there we are. All right, let's get the burner.
Well, it's been a few months. I've moved 500 miles away since that experiment and, well, I almost forgot about it. And we're going to get to the results here in just a second, but first, a lot of these non-Minecraft videos don't get a lot of love. So if you want to see more of this stuff where I experiment and do things and sort of go over the results, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment or something saying that you want more of this stuff. So let's go ahead and get into the results. I have my report here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to display the graph right here. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. First up, the smooth pot. As you can see from the table, or from the graph I should say, it's a fairly well even linear drop in temperature. Pretty much what you would expect when you take something off of the stove. There's no peaks or valleys, it's just steady decline down. However, let's talk about the corrugated one. Just a quick reminder of my hypothesis. I suspect that the corrugations act as little tiny cooling fins, so to speak. <sighs> Things get weird. Well, here's the graph. So as you can see in the internal temperature in the first four minutes, it actually gains temperature. It gets hotter after taking it off of the stove. I, I don't know why. It's, it's weird. I, I can't explain it. Does that go with my hypothesis? No, not at all. I would expect it to drop. Something does drop though, which is the external temperature. That actually, if you look at it, the first couple minutes, it drops drastically, which does go with my hypothesis that all the little corrugations are just little mini, you know, cooling fins. However, the external temperature, as you can see from the graph, it drops at a sort of similar rate as the smooth walled pot, though it is slower of a drop than the smooth wall pot, just, just by a little bit and the internal temperature is relatively the same with exception to a, a little bump, or I'm sorry, that's the external temperature. There's a little bump with the external temperature there towards the end. So the, the external temperature both confirms and sort of denies my idea. And the internal temperature, well, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I will say this, there is a big difference other than that drastic drop of external temperature with the corrugated pot. And that is that the corrugated pot internally does not get as hot as the smooth walled pot, which does go with a couple of the other um, experiments that I had seen before. So what would I do differently? Well, um, here's the pots. As you can see, they are not the same shape. And look, here's the deal. I'm not a professional potter, okay? I don't do this for a living. If we were to redo this experiment to get a better result, or at least a more scientific result, I think a professional potter should make these because they can make them in about the same shape and thickness. The other issue that I had is the, the laser thermometer that I used. When I had the pot, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, let me see here. There's a little dot right there, you might be able to see it. And what I did is I shot at that dot every single time with the laser thermometer. And what I found was the closer I got or the further away I got changed the temperature. So I think if somebody were to do this experiment again, I would put the laser thermometer on a tripod or something like that to keep it the same distance. Now I tried to keep it the same distance once I figured that out, but generally speaking, I mean, I'm holding it by my hand, so there's no real way. Internal temperature, easy. I just had an actual thermometer in there. Now, 
One thing I will bring up, because I know it's gonna come up in the comments, is the burner diameter. Now the burner diameter is about, I don't know, eight inches or so across. And unlike other dudes, I'm not gonna try to convince you that these are eight inches. Okay, that was, that was a really, really bad joke. So the burner diameter is another thing that I'm probably gonna hear a lot about in the comments. It's about like that, about eight inches or so across, and neither one of these pots bases are gonna be eight inches. And so the burner is going to actually put heat over the outside. And the reason why I don't think that's a big of a deal with this is that historically, these would have been used over a fire or in some coals to heat up. Maybe. There's also the putting the, the hot rocks and stuff in here. So I don't know. The whole diameter of the burner might be an issue, might not. Maybe, I don't know how you would test the whole hot rock, rock thing. So there we have it. There is my experiment. Now I don't think I'm going to continue on with this experiment. I think this was gonna be about it for me. Um, just my heart's not really in it. But if you wanted to continue doing it, yeah, by all means. Keep some of those ideas that I, or those issues that I mentioned to heart though when you do it. Maybe get a professional potter to do it. Or maybe even machine make them, I don't know. Anyways, that's it for now, so. Until next time, I'll see you then.